Life in North Korea is difficult enough as it is without all of the horrors that come with being in the military. Its terrible living conditions and controlling government are enough to break down even the hardest of North Korean citizens. Make sure to stay tuned until the end to hear about what happens to the soldiers who try to defect from this country. Before we take you on a journey into the life of a North Korean soldier, make sure to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and join our notification squad. Now let's get into the horrible things North Korean soldiers have to go through. We all know that living conditions are terrible in North Korea, but they can be even worse for those in the military. And it's not because there aren't enough resources to go around, but simply because leader Kim Jong-un isn't prepared to devote them to his soldiers. North Korea claims to have one of the world's biggest ground armies, with around 1 million active members and up to 6 million soldiers in reserve. While many countries allow their citizens to choose whether they'd like to serve in the army or not, that same choice isn't given to North Koreans. Every North Korean has to join the army at some point in their life, unless there's a very good reason why they can't. As soon as they turn into an adult, they're conscripted into the army. In total, there's thought to be up to 7.7 .7 million trained soldiers across the whole country. On the surface, this makes North Korea a very dangerous country to attack. With so many soldiers ready to fight, you'd think that the rest of the world would stay away purely due to the vast number of soldiers that they have in reserve. But conditions for North Korean soldiers are so poor that the bad health of its military has a negative effect against its imposing size. North Korean soldiers serve their state for varying periods of time. Women must serve for around seven years years while men serve for 10. North Korean teenagers who get into university are allowed to study before being conscripted upon graduation. But unsurprisingly, most citizens don't continue on to higher education due to a lack of schooling during their youth. This causes them to take up a place in the army early on. But if a student can make it to university, it can help them when it comes to serving in the army. Scientists only need to serve for three years and those with a bachelor's degree only have to stay for five. Throughout their time as a soldier, North Koreans are allowed home leave every so often. But this isn't a chance for them to catch up with their family. It's a time for them to recover and hopefully regain some strength. Soldiers in the military are given an incredibly poor diet of only a few potatoes a day. And in the summer, before the potato harvest happens, this pitiful amount isn't always guaranteed. Extreme hunger is a common feeling for soldiers outside of the capital city of Pyongyang. If they're not eating potatoes, they're fed raw corn kernels of corn rice. Their nutrition is so bad that North Korean soldiers are often a few inches shorter than their southern counterparts, thanks to their restricted diet. After dealing with strict workout routines and long days of physical labor, home leave is a chance for soldiers to earn some well-needed rest. They're often too weak to walk unaided and require family members to wait on them hand and foot until they're fit again. And once they're able to walk and are looking slightly healthier, they're carted back off to the army. But not all of the soldiers even make it that far. Some of them are so weak that they pass away before being returned to their families. This leaves mothers and fathers waiting anxiously for their children to return, knowing full well that they might never see them again. It's a never-ending cycle of pain for these soldiers and their families. Some troops in more specialized areas are given more food to help them get through the day. But this is rare and it still doesn't provide them with all the nutrients that they need. And what do you do when you're so desperate for food that you realize you could pass away at any moment? Many soldiers resort to stealing to try and improve their meager rations before they get too weak to survive. The military police are aware of this and often send out members to hunt down starving comrades who are looking for food they can steal. It's also been reported that some senior officers in the army will send out juniors to steal from farmers and citizens. If they fail to find supplements, the soldiers can be punished, making the whole situation even crueler. Going home for a while is also a chance for soldiers to wear their own clothes again. Sure, wearing a uniform might be a standard for many workers around the world, but these soldiers are forced to wear shoddily created outfits that can cause them pain. During the cold winters, soldiers are given thick boots to stop them from getting frostbite. But because Kim Jong-un isn't prepared to pay for top quality, the boots are often thin and stuffed with cotton, which starts to come undone after a few wears. This means that the boots rub and cause injuries every single time that they're worn. Aside from starvation and being injured by their own clothing, life for female North Korean soldiers comes with its own challenges. Women in the state are often faced with unwanted advances. They are harassed by male soldiers who just won't leave them alone. Executive officers and commanders often go up to women to adore them, which means to touch them inappropriately. It sometimes starts with a touch to their hip or neck before developing into something more severe. Sadly, these women have no one to complain to. If they speak up, there are chances that the adoration will get
get worse, leaving these women in an incredibly dangerous position. There are around 180,000 women in the North Korean military, and many of them lose their period due to the malnutrition that they face in their seven years of service. However, they often consider this a good thing because menstruating while suffering from starvation would make things even more difficult for them. But this also makes it easier for commanders to cover their tracks when they want to have their way with female soldiers. One female soldier who escaped revealed that there was a commander who would stay in his room after hours and call certain women to come see him. They were never able to refuse, even though they knew full well what would happen in that room. And once North Korean soldiers have come to grips with their living conditions, they're expected to start learning the tricks of the trade straight away. Some of it is standard military practice, learning how to handle weapons, reacting to an emergency, and obeying their leader. But some of the things they're forced to do are far scarier and require these soldiers to ignore their gut feelings and just get on with it. In 2017, it was reported that Kim Jong-un was forcing North Korean soldiers to throw landmines into the Yellow Sea. The landmines would wash up on the Dongmak Beach in South Korea, where they would then explode and fatally injure tourists and local residents. Officials say that the bombs were aimed to hurt American tourists, and 110 incidents were reported back in 2017. It's a cruel practice, especially since American and British tourists can't understand the North Korean signs that explain the dangers of the area. As the landmines lurk only inches away, these tourists can find themselves in a lot of pain in only a matter of minutes. The worst part is that the North Korean soldiers are fully aware of where and why these landmines are getting thrown into the sea, but they're not allowed to complain or refuse. However, many soldiers are brainwashed into thinking that they're throwing bombs for the good of their country. About 60% of their time is spent learning the Kim Il-sungist, Kim Jong-ilist ideology, which supports the idea that North Korea is superior to every other country around. Soldiers are trained to permanently be on guard because they're told that North Korea is always under attack. The military is also taught to obey Kim Jong-un and to protect him at any cost. They're trained to be prepared to give their lives for their leader, to ensure that the next generation will be able to live the same luxurious life that they think they're living now. Because North Korea is such an isolated country, brainwashing soldiers isn't that difficult. It's only when soldiers successfully leave the country, which comes with its own dangerous risks, that they realize just how brainwashed they are. Even when soldiers find themselves seriously injured, they're prepared to overlook it for the good of their country. Injuries are a common part of military life, and each corpse has its own hospital. On the surface, it sounds like a way to help out these poor soldiers. Sadly, there's a catch. Each regiment has a facility called a military treatment center, but there's no medicine there. And if medicine is genuinely required, the soldiers get charged for it. The medicine that they receive is usually rubbing alcohol, which means that many soldiers continue to suffer despite paying money to try to get themselves back to a healthy state. But if a soldier becomes so ill that they're forced to leave the military, or if they pass away, there's no sympathy for the family. No compensation is given, and all that the family receives as a memory of their loved one is a certificate detailing how long they served for. But making it out alive isn't necessarily the best end goal to have. Those who do not come out of military service in one piece often find that their personalities have shifted beyond repair. Life in the army teaches soldiers to be tough and to ignore any feelings so that they are often violent afterwards. There are a lot of complaints about soldiers from local residents, and some people even pick up their bags and leave if they see one approaching. These soldiers, after suffering years of abuse in the army, often come back to civilization with little hope of continuing to live life like they did before. By now, you might be wondering why these these soldiers don't just leave the army to try and find a better life elsewhere. Some of them try, but it's very dangerous to do that. Defection is a crime in North Korea, and it's one that isn't committed lightly. It's common for soldiers to be taken down if they try to leave for South Korea. If they're lucky, they're thrown into jail instead, where they'll spend the rest of their days in squalid, starving conditions. Kim Jong-un finds it very embarrassing when any of his troops try to escape, because it gives his country a bad reputation. So when they try to cross the border via the Tumen River, they are often met by border guards who aren't afraid to take fire if they see a defector. And if there's even the smallest inkling that a senior leader knows of a soldier's plan to leave the state, it's likely that the leader will be punished too. It seems that the threats associated to defecting have been enough to stop North Korean soldiers from escaping, as numbers have dropped over the past years. But the numbers are still incredibly high. Since 1953, between 100,000 and 300,000 North Koreans have defected to Russia or China. It's clear to see that life as a North Korean soldier has many challenges, and only the strongest are able to survive. You might think that the military is entirely filled with big, strong men and incredible, brave women, but that's not always the case. Some troops around the world are in half as successful, either because of inside corruption or because they just simply don't have the manpower to fight for their country on a sufficient level. Stay tuned until the end to hear about the country that uses child soldiers to try and protect the land. Now let's get into the weakest military troops that put their country to shame. Iraq. 
Iraq used to be the fourth biggest army in the world under Saddam Hussein, but it's now little more than a shadow of its former self. The Iraqi army was given around $26 billion of investments and years of training from American and British forces, but that wasn't enough to keep them up there with even the average armies of the world. One of the biggest problems in the Iraqi army was the huge number of ghost soldiers, those who were receiving pay but weren't showing up to work. North Korea the North Korean army might not seem like a threat to too many people because it's unlikely we'll ever face their land forces in person. And while we might already consider North Korea to be an embarrassment to the rest of the world, their military is even more of a laughingstock from the outside. Conscription to the army is a compulsory part of life in North Korea, so residents don't have a choice but to sign up. The horrendous conditions that they're put through, ranging from starvation to corruption and abuse, means that the rest of the world looks on sympathetically. Eritrea Eritrea is widely considered to be the worst place in the world to join the army. It's another country to force its inhabitants to sign up, but there's no term of service, making it open-ended. In 2015, the United Nations Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in Eritrea released a 500-page report detailing the systematic, widespread, and gross human rights violations that spurred thousands of people to flee the totalitarian East African country to get out of the army once and for all. And what makes matters worse is that the people forced into the army aren't even properly paid. They only receive a tiny amount of pocket money. Nigeria it was only 2014 when Nigerian army troops launched an unsuccessful attempt to assassinate one of their country's most prominent generals. And although the plot didn't work, it did shine a light on the failings of the military. At the time, the country was struggling with the recent abduction of 200 schoolgirls by the militant group Boko Haram. The attempted assassination was so badly done that the army was forced to deny it had attempted an attack in the first place. The only thing it really achieved was highlighting the low morale and poor capabilities of the 60,000 strong army. Costa Rica Costa Rica would struggle if anyone wanted to attack it because it barely has an army. In fact, its army is so small that many people don't even think it exists nowadays, and many peace activists have praised the country for its absence of a military, which was formally removed in 1948. But Costa Rica still has official fighters, even if they don't fall under the term of an army. It has 70 soldiers who are trained to intercept narcotics traffickers, rescue hostages, and act as a high-intensity counter-terrorist unit. However, Costa Rica is still focusing training on potential future conflict. The Philippines The Philippines was called the sixth worst army in the world back in 2015 thanks to its inability to upgrade their training and equipment. Their problem started when Chinese military forces started moving forward and claiming land belonging to the Philippines. But despite this, Army spokesman Colonel Benjamin Howe said that they were working to become a world-class army by 2028. At the same time, the country is starting to build up its supply of equipment and to modernize existing pieces. That's all well and good, as long as no one decides to attack them in the next decade. Tajikistan Tajikistan rarely makes international news, and that's partially because it's such a small and unassuming country. However, its borders are with Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, China, and Afghanistan, which is where its problems begin. It's not a dangerous country itself, but its highly political neighbors means the country has to be constantly on high alert for danger. And it would really be a problem if trouble did decide to come to Tajikistan because the army is incredibly underdeveloped. There are reportedly 16,000 soldiers involved in guarding one of these borders, but their weaponry and military equipment leaves a lot to be desired. Mongolia the Mongolian army used to be far stronger than it is now. At its peak, the empire of the Mongols stretched from Eastern Europe to Eastern Siberia and the Korean Peninsula, and its army was representative of its size. This was back during the 13th century, and unfortunately, the country's military has gone downhill over the years. And its neighbors, Russia and China, keep getting stronger and stronger, which isn't a good sign. Mongolia's army definitely needs to step it up in case a war ever breaks out between those two. Saudi Arabia 
Saudi Arabia has the opposite problem when it comes to rounding up troops. Its army is actually too big. And while this might never seem like a bad thing, it's caused huge organizational issues, and no one is really sure how to tackle them. Because other than simply kicking people out, how do you reduce the size of an army? The Saudi Arabian army's main goal is to push back Iranian forces, but they're limited by their military, despite the fact that the kingdom is one of the world's largest spenders on defense. As it stands, people are far more scared of the Iranian army than they are of Saudi Arabia's. Central African Republic What do you do when you need more soldiers, but all of the adults in the country are already fighting or otherwise engaged? Start picking out children to fight instead. And that's exactly why there's so much shame on the Central African Republic's army, because they're using underage fighters to supposedly protect the country. As many as 10,000 children were used by armed groups in the conflict in the Central African Republic between 2012 and 2015, and many still remain there now. These children, some of whom are as young as 8 years old, are taught to fight in the military, despite the government's best efforts to stop people under the age of 15 from joining. Children have played a significant role in wars throughout history. Whether as servants, drummers, or full-fledged soldiers, kids have been used in almost every armed conflict, and it's only recently that this practice has become stigmatized. Stay tuned till the end to see where child soldiers are sadly still being used today. Joan of Arc Joan of Arc is without question the most famous child soldier in history. She wasn't just a soldier, however, but a commander, and she was female. In 1424, 12-year-old Joan of Arc was told in a saintly vision that she was to help drive the English out of the English-occupied France. At 16, she made her vision known to French royalty, who then enlisted Joan as a knight and later a commander during the Hundred Years' War. From ages 16 to 18, Joan led assaults against the English army Army becoming a military hero. She was eventually captured by the English and was martyred at just 19 years of age. John Clem John Clem is the youngest non-commissioned officer in U.S. Army history and also the youngest American soldier to register a fatality. Following his mother's passing, nine-year-old Johnny ran away from home to join the Union Army during the American Civil War. After being refused by one regiment, John became the drummer boy of another. For those who don't know, drummer boys were used to keep marching soldiers in step. In one battle for which John achieved fame, he switched his drum for a musket and fatally wounded a Confederate officer officer who was demanding his surrender. For his heroics, Clem was promoted to sergeant at just 12 years of age, securing his place in the history books. Edward Black It's hard to exactly confirm this fact since many enlistment records have not withstood time and many soldiers lied about their age, but Edward Black is believed to be the youngest soldier in American history. In 1861, at just eight years of age, Black enlisted as a drummer boy for the 21st Indiana Volunteer Infantry of the Union Army. He he was captured by Confederate soldiers during the Battle of Baton Rouge and was imprisoned on Ship Island off the coast of Mississippi. This would also make him the youngest ever prisoner of war. Edward was freed in 1862, but is thought to have passed away from injuries sustained in battle. Calvin Graham You'd think that by the 1940s, there would be a stricter minimum age for military service. There was, age 16 with parental consent, but children still lied to go to war. Calvin Graham was the youngest of these frauds, entering the U.S. Navy at age 12 by forging his mother's signature. This made Graham the youngest U.S. soldier in World War II. He participated in battle and was even hit with shrapnel. In 1943, the Navy discovered his real age and Graham was dishonorably discharged, losing all of his medals. They were eventually reinstated except for his Purple Heart, which was only reinstated after he had passed. Mumchilo Gavrich you won't believe the age of the youngest soldier to fight in World War I. Mumchilo Gavrich was just seven years old when he became a member of the Serbian army in 1914. Gavrich was no mascot or drummer boy, he was a real soldier who participated in battle and was even wounded. For his actions, which included pointing out the location of enemy troops, Gavrich was named a corporal at the age of eight and a staff sergeant at age 10. Dan Bullock Marine Dan Bullock holds an unfortunate military record for being the youngest American soldier to lose his life in the Vietnam War. 
Having doctored his Brooke certificate, Bullock was just 14 years old when he entered the Marines. The Brooklyn teenager went through training and was shipped to Vietnam not long after. On that tragic day on June 7, 1969, Bullock was 15 years and 5 months old. But his true age wasn't revealed until reporters visited his grieving family. Sidney Lewis the Brits also had their fair share of child soldiers, especially during the First World War. The youngest British soldier in World War I, at least officially, was Sidney Lewis, who entered the British Army at the age of 12. At age 13, Lewis had his first real test. He was sent to the Battle of Somme and spent six weeks fighting in the trenches. It was during this time that Sidney's mother discovered where her prepubescent son was and sent his birth certificate to the war office demanding his return. He arrived home uninjured. David Bailey Freeman there were young soldiers on the other side as well. David Bailey Freeman was a serviceman who was believed to be the youngest Confederate soldier in U.S. history. In April 1862, just before his 11th birthday, Freeman enlisted in the 6th Georgia Cavalry as a marker. Freeman would spend three years in the Civil War, and he became famous for his record-breaking age. Unnamed Children Unfortunately, child soldiers aren't just reserved for history books. Children as young as five are being forced to engage in armed conflicts all over the world. Some countries with epidemic levels of underage servicemen are Syria, the Congo, Iraq, and Myanmar, which are all in the midst of violent conflicts. Also, terrorist groups like ISIS and Boko Haram rely heavily on child recruitment. It's estimated that 300,000 child soldiers are currently in combat and that 40% of the world's armed forces use child soldiers. If you haven't heard of North Korea, then you've probably been living under a rock. The communist country has made endless headlines in the 21st century due to its fervent nuclear development program. This hermit kingdom has long been shrouded in mystery thanks to its tight border controls and restricted travel of its own citizens. Now here are the horrible things North Korean female soldiers have to endure. The leaders of North and South Korea made history in April 2018. Kim Jong-un became the first North Korean leader to visit South Korea when he attended a summit with South Korean President Moon Jae-in. The two signed a declaration vowing to denuclearize and end the Korean War, which divided the Korean Peninsula in the 1950s. But since the official end of the fighting, North Korea has maintained its military prowess and refuses to scale it back, but at what cost? Military service for men has always been mandatory, but women were able to join voluntarily. However, in 2015, the Communist Party started requiring women to serve as well. Any woman who's in between the ages of 17 and 20 is over 4 feet 6 inches and that has a high school education has to join. Men serve 10 years while women serve 7, and it's no walk in the park to be in the North Korean military. For starters, female soldiers have been seen patrolling in high heels. Considering the length of a standard patrol, we don't doubt that these poor ladies' feet are covered in blisters at the end of the day. In the barracks, over 20 women share a hot, sweaty room. They sleep on mattresses made of rice hulls, which absorbs the sweat and causes the room to stink. One defector claimed that the women do not shower often because the water comes straight from a mountain stream through a hose. Not only is it frigid, but snakes and frogs occasionally make their way through the hose and into the army showers. North Korea is still a male-dominated society, so traditional gender roles dictate daily life. Female soldiers have shorter physical workouts and training than their male counterparts. However, they're expected to perform domestic chores like cleaning and cooking, from which the men are exempt. But cooking only happens when there are enough rations to go around. Some reports claim that meals consist of only three spoonfuls of rice. This means that North Korean soldiers are often malnourished, which is particularly dangerous for women. Coupled with intense stress, the military environment causes many women to stop menstruating after six months to a year of service. On top of that, the North Korean army fails to provide enough sanitary pads for its soldiers. Additionally, some barracks lack private toilets and the women must go to the bathroom in front of the men. Reports of sexual harassment and abuse are common in the Hermit Kingdom's army. While the government maintains a seven-year prison sentence for men convicted of crimes against women, many go unpunished because victims are often afraid to report their attackers. Many female defectors say that violence against women is a normal part of North Korean society. 
The country also has numerous laws and policies that only apply to women. This causes many women to feel that the only way to succeed or advance in life is through selling their bodies. Nothing illustrates this better than North Korea's new kind of female soldier, its army of beauties. Groups of 200 to 300 women are sent to international sporting events as cheerleaders. They are specifically chosen for their beauty and dedication to North Korea and the Communist Party. This army unit made international headlines at the 2018 Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, South Korea. There, more reports emerged of continued abuse. These ladies are often used as entertainment at parties. They're often instructed to go home with certain officials or guests. However, many defectors claim that these beauties are still treated better than your average female soldier. In addition to the abuse that military women specifically face, they also have to endure the same horrific conditions of their male counterparts. Nutrition and sanitation is far below any Western standards, and soldiers are also instructed to shoot at anyone who tries to defect over the border. Recently, one 25-year-old soldier fled across Korea's demilitarized zone. He was shot five times by his fellow soldiers. After being rushed to the hospital, doctors found that his intestines were infested with multiple parasitic worms. These parasites are common when victims come into contact with feces and terribly unsanitary conditions. If female soldiers are tasked with cleaning, we can only imagine how many of them also suffer from these parasitic worms. And with North Korea's crumbling healthcare system, we can assume that they are rarely diagnosed and treated. So while Moon and Kim's meeting was historic, the world is waiting to see if it results in any military improvements. If things go well, we truly hope that the female soldiers of North Korea will start receiving more respect and better sanitary care. These were some of the horrible things North Korean female soldiers have to endure. Do you know of any other horrific tales from North Korean defectors? Share them with us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.